Gatsby is an interesting framework because a lot of people don't fully understand what it's capable of, and myself included in that. And I think a lot of that has to do with their marketing. They use a lot of buzzwords and jargon around uh, what it can do, and I think that just leaves people really confused. I thought it was mainly a static site generator at first, but turns out it can do way more than that. And in fact, uh, it can build dynamic apps and websites as well. And so that's what we're gonna be looking at in this video is how you can actually set up a little boilerplate for yourself so you can start building dynamic apps in Gatsby. Um, because Gatsby can be a really cool combination of a static site generator for some of your pages and you can actually mix in dynamic pages um, in the same site. And so that is a really cool thing that you can do with Gatsby. So it's kind of like a site generator and create React app um, all in one. And so we're gonna look at how we can actually get that working in this video. So where we're gonna start is the uh, beginner boilerplate that they give you. So we can get this boilerplate by running npm i-g and Gatsby CLI. Uh, so to run this, you're going to need to have Node.js installed on your computer, and then you can install the Gatsby CLI. After you install the Gatsby CLI, you can run Gatsby new, um, and then the name of your project, I just called mine test. Uh, and then yeah, so this will go ahead and create a simple project for you. Should, your file should look like this when it's uh, done running. Now I went ahead and added TypeScript to my project. For this, it doesn't really matter. You can go JavaScript or TypeScript. Uh, for this tutorial, it's not really going to matter, um, but I figured I'd just tell you there's three simple steps you need to do if you want to start using TypeScript in your Gatsby project. So step one is just add a tsconfig file with the settings that you like. Um, and then in your Gatsby config, you're going to need to add the Gatsby plugin TypeScript um, to your plugins list. And then in your package.json, just make sure you install Gatsby plugin TypeScript. And um, there you go, you can start using .tsx files and TypeScript for your pages and whatnot. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So first off, Gatsby gives you static files uh, from the beginning. So if you go into source, pages, index.tsx, or .js for you, you can see this is a static page. They gave us a page two, which is static. Um, so you hopefully know how to add static content to Gatsby. So in this video, we're gonna be focusing on how you can add a dynamic app to this. So the key to adding this um, is to go into their client-only routes and user authentication docs. And I'll link this below because we're gonna just copy this Gatsby node thing here. So I'm gonna copy this, um, and this shows us how we can create a path for our app to live. Okay, so we're gonna go to our Gatsby-node and we're gonna paste that in. Uh, and really what we're pasting here is the path to our app. So this is a prefix for our application. So it's prefix to slash app. Um, so what that means is, if I come over to my pages, I'm going to create an app.tsx or .js if you're doing JavaScript. And this is where I'm gonna put my dynamic content um, for that. And then when I actually go to our application, we're gonna go to slash app in the browser to actually access it. Um, so if you want to go to a different location, you can prefix this uh, with something different besides app. Um, so we have this bit here. The next part is this app.ts file. So this is where we can actually start uh, building our, the dynamic client-side rendering stuff. So here we can actually put a router, and Gatsby uses reach router. So we're going to set up reach router right here. And then this is going to look really familiar if you use create React app create React app to build any other type of React application. So here we're gonna say uh, const router, and we're just gonna create a component where we're gonna render a router. Now this router is coming from reach router, so we need to go ahead and add that to our project. So yarn add at reach slash router. And then we're also going to add the types for it uh, using dash d add type slash reach router. And then you do two underscores here. Um, you only have to do that if you're using TypeScript. Um, okay, so and then inside of this we can put our routes. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new 
folder called modules and inside of it I'm going to create a file called random person tsx and so I'm just going to create a react component here and we're going to come back and actually fill this out more but this is just a react component that we're just going to act as a page for us all right so I want to import this from reach router And let's make sure we also import uh, React inside of this file. And then here I'm going to say random person. And in reach router, we actually specify the path on the component itself. And then here I'm just going to say path slash app. So you'll notice this matches our prefix. And then here is what the path I want it to be on random dash person. Um, I'm not sure what this is complaining about. Should be happy. Um, the other thing is you'll notice this one is complaining because we do not have path as a prop. This is a TypeScript thing. We can fix this by uh, passing into our functional component here. Props that extend route component props. So we're gonna save that um, and then there we go, that's good. And if I just do that. We're going to say as my router. So for some reason, I was getting some kind of name conflict. So one way you can actually just rename imports is like so. You can have that name of it um, from the library. And then this is your custom name. So that's how I just worked around that problem there. And then we're just going to say export default router. All right, so then I actually want to run this. So I'm gonna do yarn start in my terminal here. And now um, this may, this should look start looking familiar to you. And this is basically where you can just start putting your React application and the dynamic content that you want. So once this is finished building, we can actually go to localhost 8000 slash app slash random person. And oh, it looks like mine's stuck. So sometimes my uh, Gatsby gets stuck like this trying to build pages. Usually I just control C out, delete the cache, and that, that helps. There's a file called dot cache that gets created and that usually uh, stall, stalls it. And just kidding, mine's just straight stuck. All right, so whatever reason it kept getting stuck, I just controlled C and restarted it a bunch of times until randomly one time it worked. So here we are. Um, but if we go to localhost, we can now render our person and we can see it says hello right here. So that was our, our component over here, our random person. And now if I go to just the index page, you can see here's the static content that's being rendered. And so this is basically the main thing that you need to know is that you set up this app.tx file and inside of here you now have your router and you can create all the routes and all the pages that you want. And this should look similar because now we're creating basically a dynamic application. Now, usually dynamic applications, what we mean by that is they're fetching content from an API. So let's look about look at how we can do the same thing here. So from a random person over here, we're going to actually fetch a random person from the random user API. So if you go to this URL, you can actually fetch a random person. You can see it here. So what I'm going to say, say const person. We're going to store it in state. So we're doing use state to store the person there. And then we're going to have use effect, which is we're going to fetch from the API when this first loads. So we're getting the JSON response, and then we're setting the person here. And then let's just go ahead and render our person in a pre-tag. So 
So I'm in json.stringify, and we're gonna say here, uh, person null comma two. And so this will just print the JSON in a uh, prettified manner. So now if I come over here, I can see a person here, and if I refresh, we're gonna get a new person each time, and it's gonna fetch from the API. So cool. So as you can see, you can now just do your normal React stuff from these components, and you can follow any React tutorial from here. And you now have attached to your Gatsby static generated pages a dynamic app. Um, and it's prefixed under this slash app here. Now, you may be wondering, all right, that's cool, but let's do some more dynamic stuff. Like the main dynamic thing that you may wanna do is you may wanna take a URL parameter inside of here. Um, or you may want to do like an authenticated route. So this is authenticated routes, a good use case for this. The use case we're gonna look at though for this is just a uh, results, is a, a URL parameter. So for example, let's say with this component, I wanna take a uh, parameter here called results. So now my random person, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say results is, well, it's really a string. So with a reach router, we can say that we're getting a URL parameter in TypeScript by doing this, passing uh, the generic in here to our route component props. So it's called results, and that just matches the name here. And you'll notice I put colon in front. That's how you specify this is a parameter. All right, so then I can put, uh, get the results here. And how this API works, let's say we want to get more than one person. We can say results two, and then that's going to give us two people. So I want to I'm going to do the same thing here. So we're going to say results is equal to, and then we're going to pass in our results. And then we just need to add this as a dependency here for our use effect. All right, all right, and ooh, let's go back here real quick. The default is gonna be one. And you know what, I don't know how, I don't know how to actually make this, I don't remember how you make this a def, uh, a parameter that can sometimes be null. I can't remember if the syntax is this or if you put the question mark at the end. If I had to guess, I bet the question mark goes there. Uh, but. Either way, we'll just ignore that for now. And let's say I want five people. So we can do slash five. Um, we can see that our person's being rendered and we can see that there's five of them if we scroll down. Now I can get three, if I go here. Um, and there you go. So now we're starting to get uh, dynamic pages that aren't just static. The content now changes. Um, and again, you can make API requests in here and you can do whatever you like. So there you go, that is how you can start doing dynamic content in Gatsby. What I'm gonna do with this particular project is stick it on GitHub and make it a Gatsby starter. So if you wanna use this for future projects, I'm gonna be using it for future projects as whenever I wanna do dynamic stuff in Gatsby, uh, I'm gonna use this as a starting point. And so I'll link that in the description if you wanna get that as well.